let's quickly look at a few different ways that we can cut this new loop up and make something new out of it, or at least rearrange it slightly. Now there are actually two different methods for quickly chopping loops. The second one I probably prefer more, but the first one is sort of more traditional route. And what you want to do is go up here to the razor tool or slice tool, knife tool they call it. We're now in a mode where we can just slice on the grid and we can just go ahead and slice the loop exactly where we want. I'm just slicing at sort of points that I can see transients really. And then you can move these around and reverse them and duplicate them as much as you want. So let's go back to the original tool and over here, we, we've got a few different options. We can reverse them. So let's start reversing a few of these. And let's play that back. And then of course we can alter the length of them and you, when this little loop thing comes up, we can loop parts of them. So if you resize in the top, the top part of the loop and then the top part of the uh, clip, sorry, and then go to the bottom part of the clip, you can loop. Okay, so that's one way we can cut and slice and reverse and treat and bounce and all sorts. But if you want to do it a little bit more non-destructively, because obviously that's going to affect the loop in the, in the arrange window. If you want to then start arranging with it, it's going to be a little difficult because it's not consolidated. So if you click on it, and then double click, you're going to get the editor come up down here. We can change the size of this. And you can see that there's sort of events, they call them onsets on the transient parts of the loop already set up. And you can actually change where the onsets come on, or you can change the quantize time. Uh, here you go. You can put shuffle and humanize in and all sorts. But I'm going to put split at onsets down here. So if you do that, it's going to split that split it up. And you can then move these parts around and you can reverse these just in the same way that we were. You know, and you can move them or change the change the, the start point in exactly the same way. You can duplicate them into the next part. And I find editing like this is sort of much more accurate. You get a much better overview of what's going on. So we can duplicate like that. Reverse the duplicated bit. And then when you're done with that, you know, you can bounce the whole thing. You can even go into pan and start to change some of the, uh, the pan. It's just a really nice way of editing, you know. Change the gain if you like, and the pitch even of separate slices. Reminds me a little bit of the Rex editor in Reason. And you can also stretch parts of them as well. Get some really interesting sounds. And when you're done, you can bounce that if you like. And we can go post fader. And then we've got a bounce version underneath. So that's all our edits consolidated and bounced into a file really quickly. So that second version is definitely more up to date for me and definitely works better than the first version. Uh, which is sort of more destructive and probably a little bit more, you know, like other doors and probably what more you used to. But uh, for me, that second version is just perfect and a really nice way to work. So there's a couple of different ways you can slice up and edit loops in Bitwig. I'm now going to show you how to convert a loop to MIDI and what this means and what we can do with the tech.